everybody, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation 4 to take another look at a premium ship in World of Warships Legends. Today we'll be looking at HMS Belfast, the Tier 6 Royal Navy Cruiser. As usual, I'll be starting off with some history, move into my thoughts on the ship, we'll hit on commanders, run through all of the stats, and then finally jump into some gameplay. If you want to skip around, I have left an index down in the description. And with that, let's just jump right into it. HMS Belfast is the ninth in a series of 10 cruisers that made up the town class cruisers, built by the Royal Navy between 1934 and 1939. Unlike most classes of ships named after the lead ship of the class, these ships were generally named after towns within Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Though no two ships were really exactly the same, the town class cruisers come in three distinct subclasses, the Southamptons, the Gloucesters, and the Edinburghs, which were the last two of the ten town class cruisers, the most extensively revised and fewest in number. In terms of peculiarity in this design, you will note that the town class cruiser turrets feature three guns with the center gun set back just a little bit in the turret. The reason for this is actually to help increase the ship's accuracy because the blast of the outer guns might otherwise disrupt the travel of the projectile being shot from the center gun. The Belfast in particular was named after the capital of North Ireland and actually was laid down in its namesake town on the 10th of December, 1936. She was launched in March, 1938 and completed in August of 1939. She was one of the Edinburgh subclass, which included only one other ship. So she featured slightly revised turrets and additional anti-aircraft protection. Belfast entered the war as part of the 18th cruiser squadron based out of Scapa Flow. In fact, she was transferred to the squadron a day before Germany invaded Poland. Unfortunately, just under three months later, on November 21st, she was struck on the bottom of the ship by a magnetic mine, which busted its keel, or essentially broke the back of the ship. Considered for scrapping, the Royal Navy eventually did decide to repair the ship. She would spend more than two years laid up being repaired and modernized. By the time she was sent to sea again in 1942, Belfast featured some of the most modern radar and fire control systems in the world, which would come in handy for one of her major triumphs. On Christmas Day 1943, the crew of HMS Belfast were informed that there would be no Christmas dinner because sometime later that evening or into the morning hours, they expected to intercept the battlecruiser Scharnhorst. Belfast was part of the home fleet and, in this particular engagement, was the lead ship in Force One. Force One consists of three cruisers, HMS Belfast, one of her half-sister ships, the Sheffield, and Norfolk, a county-class cruiser. This force was tasked with trying to drive the German ship toward Admiral Fraser's Force Two, which included his flagship, HMS Duke of York, a King George V class battleship which, without such assistance, was not fast enough to actually run down the Scharnhorst. Duke of York was accompanied by cruiser HMS Jamaica, a Crown Colony class cruiser like the Fiji, and several destroyers. Early in the morning on December 26th, using her powerful radar, Belfast located the battlecruiser traveling north towards a convoy bound for Russia. For the next 12 hours, she pursued the ship, driving the Scharnhorst south along with her fellow cruisers towards Fraser's battle group, then trying to run down the battle cruiser when Scharnhorst turned to the east. As she was pulling away from the Royal Navy, Scharnhorst took a hit to her power plant, reducing her speed. Ultimately, she was struck several more times by continued fire from the pursuing cruisers and battleship before she was torpedoed by destroyers and HMS Belfast herself. Scharnhorst would sink, taking all but 36 of her 1969 crew members with her. Though 6-inch guns are considered rather small in terms of naval warfare, a 152mm shell is a pretty considerable weapon when you look at the size of your average field artillery, particularly in World War II. 
and a ship like the Belfast could, between all 12 of its guns, drop as much as one ton of ordnance on an enemy position every 15 seconds at a range up to 14 miles. So being positioned in the North Atlantic, it should be no surprise that on June 6, 1944, Belfast participated in Operation Overlord, the invasion of Northern France at Normandy. After D-Day, the Belfast was transferred to the Far East where she would spend the remainder of the war and beyond. At the outbreak of the Korean War, she would see further action supporting United Nations troops attempting to repel the forces of the not-so-democratic people's not-quite-republic of Korea. In total, she would fire more than 8,000 shells in support of operations before she was transferred out of theater following some damage caused by a 76mm land-based artillery shell which struck the ship. Adding to the Belfast's notoriety is not only that she survived the war, one of just six of her class that managed to do that, but she still exists today. Belfast enjoys pride of place as part of the Imperial War Museum's collection. She sits on the River Thames just opposite the Tower of London. Sadly, as one of the last remaining ships of the Royal Navy's proud history, thanks to the government's aggressive urge to pawn literally everything following World War II, which isn't really any of my business being an American, but is really kind of bothersome if you're into history. What were we, what were we talking about? Oh yes, HMS Belfast. What do I think about her in the game? Well, in spite of the Belfast's reputation as being a completely broken ship on the PC, I actually don't find this ship to be all that wildly overpowered in Legends. The Belfast's reputation lives and dies on the idea that ships shouldn't have access to both a smokescreen and radar. I get the argument for it, basically the ship can blind you and then under the right conditions use that ESP or radar to pinpoint where you are and shoot you to pieces. It's a neat trick or gimmick, however you want to call it, but the Belfast trades away its historic torpedoes and access to a heel in order to do this. Of course, it's not the only trick it has. Belfast has access to pretty good HE rounds. Now, personally, I don't know if you can really point to this as a strong plus because, in my opinion, with British AP, you should probably shoot as much AP as you possibly can, and the HE on this ship is just icing on the cake. All in all, this makes the Belfast a pretty formidable tier six cruiser, not as tough or as good of a fire starter as the Boise, in part because she has fewer guns, but also not quite as agile as that floating meme, the Atlanta, either. The one thing she definitely has in common with those two ships is her vulnerability, and for that reason, you do get that smoke, which, because you're a town-class cruiser, like the Edinburgh, you have that radar too. Now, to be fair, the radar on this ship is fairly weak, as far as radar is concerned, and considering your detectability while firing from smoke, you actually have a fairly limited range of engagement, basically between six and eight and a half kilometers to exploit the enemy. Otherwise, you'll still be seen while you're firing in smoke or they'll be too far away for you to detect them. Where commanders are concerned, I think the best choice is pretty obvious. Bruce Fraser has a lot of skills that are going to play nicely into the Belfast's play style, including the potential for the highest accuracy, the greatest speed, though I still wouldn't tell you that this ship is fast by any means, the highest potential AP penetration, which will help against cruisers in particular, and the highest potential fire chance, though you still may want to lay off the HE wherever possible since you still do have those excellent Royal Navy AP shells in your pocket. John Jellico is a workable solution for the Belfast. I haven't really found him capable of playing strongly into the Belfast's strengths or correcting any of her weaknesses, but he does offer you a lot of choice in terms of what you'd like to build. And that's mostly in slots two, four, and the legendary ability. That said, his base trait is completely useless for the Belfast, so I'd probably rate him as the weakest of the three natural choices. That leaves Billiam Tennant, who can do two major things for the Belfast. That is, increase her maneuverability and reduce her vulnerability to incoming shell damage. 
considering that you don't have a heal, uh, that's pretty good. If you go for this kind of build though, you might find yourself having to sail a little bit closer than you'd like in order to keep up a reasonable degree of accuracy. And my general opinion of his base trait is that it's something that you don't ever want to have to rely on because it's kind of effectively trying to reduce a kick to the groin to something like a kick to the groin after taking two aspirin. In spite of this graphic, you're still not going to walk away with a smile on your face. Inspirations for these commanders might be actually a little bit more interesting than the actual commanders themselves. For the most part, I would stick to offense, but there are certain arguments that you could make for a stealth inspiration build. And I've also listed on here Togo as a potential inspiration. I would probably only use that if you were going to go into Jellico and you wanted to really extend that smoke screen and make the most out of all of your consumables as possible. So as I run down these stats, we'll be using Bruce Frazier. And since the Belfast is about halfway between a Boise, Fiji, and Indianapolis, I'll figure I'll just point out how strong or weak I think these stats are relative to the field rather than one particular ship. So first thing we're gonna start out with is obviously survivability with 35,700 hit points and armor ranging between six and 114 millimeters. The Belfast is actually solidly in the middle of the pack in terms of its overall hit points and armor compared to the Tech Tree cruisers. The 4% that is listed here for torpedo reduction is pretty much lowest in class, shared with the New Orleans, so dodge, I guess. For artillery, it would not be surprising to say that the artillery on the Belfast is relatively short-ranged compared to its Tech Tree counterparts. Most of the cruisers in the game are heavy cruisers at this level so you're looking at about two kilometers less range but your guns reload almost twice as fast as heavy cruiser guns and you do considerably more than half of the damage so ultimately not bad when we consider maneuverability at 34.1 knots that is obviously considering my commander and also the speed flag that i have you are pretty average in terms of your maneuverability, probably closest to the Algerie in terms of overall stats on paper. That said, I feel like this ship does turn a little bit better than the Algerie, even though I can't prove it at all. And where concealment is concerned, you are definitely best in class with around one kilometer less detectability than most of your counterparts. This also translates favorably into detectability while firing from smoke and also detection from the air by a similar distance. So I did hit a little bit on the equipment that the Belfast has. Um, it does have access to this radar and that radar stretches out to 8.4 kilometers. It lasts for 25 seconds and then reloads after three minutes. Now that is not an incredible radar. It's about one and a half kilometers shorter than what the Indianapolis has. But that said, having a radar at all is a pretty unique thing for a tier six cruiser and the Indianapolis does not have access to smoke. Uh, the one thing I will say about the smoke is that it is not what you'd expect from a British cruiser. It does actually last about a minute and 43 seconds. So not terrible. Uh, not the longest smoke in the world. It is definitely very usable. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and get into some actual gameplay. We will be on Trident. And there you see the Belfast with its uh, somewhat historic camouflage. Uh, it actually looks very similar to the camouflage the Belfast is wearing today, but not quite exact, and I can't really tell you why. Uh, in any case, this is probably good enough. Good good enough. That's a thing. Uh, so here you see we're kind of rolling out towards the middle of the map. Uh, we are in a game that actually doesn't feature any destroyers. So that's kind of a plus and kind of a minus. Uh, I'm sure all of the battleships on my team are thinking that's a nice thing. Uh, maybe some of the battleships on the enemy team are thinking the same thing, uh, but unfortunately 
they are going to have to deal with the Belfast. Now, as I'm moving into position, um, I will say the Belfast is a ship that I feel really confident in taking up against most battleships. And that actually usually includes most tier 7 battleships, uh, provided that they are not really paying a lot of attention to me. Because uh, that can end pretty poorly, pretty quickly, and regardless of, of what you do, if you just get unlucky and, and actually do get hit. Uh, now you're seeing, I'm going to try to maneuver around this gentleman in the boat right in front of me. He's shooting. I'm thinking about shooting, um, but as you can see, I am biding my time. Obviously, it's best for me not to shoot too early, because if I do, uh, I am more likely to be selected for the next volley that New Mexico has to give. Uh, now I am starting out with some HE. I have started a couple of fires. I suspect he will probably put them out, uh, and my next hope would be to try to actually create a fire. Now, due to just the number of Royal Navy cruisers that are running around out there, uh, I have, I think, a smoke screen here that I can just kind of loiter in. There you see we have uh, Gneisenau moving across the middle of the backfield of the enemy. And the Gneisenau, along with some of the other ships on the enemy team, is one of the reasons I'm going to stick more towards HE in this game than I would typically recommend. Now he's at a pretty decent range and really all I want to do is keep him nice and crispy. So if I can light another fire here, I know that that's not going to get put out anytime soon because obviously we saw he did use a damage control there. Uh, anything that I can make stick to his boat is going to stick for quite some time, probably at least a minute. Uh, there we have a fire set on him, and I am putting these way out there. My hope is to try to find another part of the ship. I'm kind of hoping for the bow. Um, as I've been spotted for a few seconds, I decide to go ahead, pop smoke, and this is one of the things that you do definitely as a Belfast. That is using someone else's spot for your advantage. Uh, in this case, since there aren't any destroyers, there's not a whole lot of torpedo threat out there. There's, you know, we've got some enemy cruisers that could probably try to launch some torpedoes in here. Uh, but essentially what you see is I'm spreading the love, trying to make sure everybody gets invited to the barbecue. I should probably mute this part because I don't really feel like that was completely my fault. Uh, but in the meantime, we're missing plenty of shots out there on that Scharnhorst. Uh, we finally do start to manage to actually hit him. We do get a big fire. You can see he's clearly using Ciliacs because he's just got that one massive fire on the midsection rather than um, up to four fires on his ship. So he put that out and now we're still shooting at him in particular because he's not going to have any extra resistance to fire. He's not going to be able to put out any fires that we start in the next minute or so. There you finally see a fire getting started on his ship uh, and as you look up at the damage total, it's, you know, ticking up nicely, but we are down a ship, which you can hardly uh, ignore at this point. So I'm going to continue to try to play the game and actually move up. Uh, certainly in that position, right in the middle of the map with lots of things I can shoot at, that's a pretty nice position that you're honestly not going to get all that often because... Uh, usually there's going to be somebody to push you or challenge you there or just to go ahead and launch some torpedoes blindly into a smoke screen. You know, 
it works, particularly with the amount of attention I was paying. Um, it's very possible that you could hit me in a situation like that. Uh, now we're trying to steal a little bit of damage as that Sharn Horse is going behind the mountain. If we can catch him on fire, hopefully he will think about whether or not he should put it out. Or hopefully he's already actually used his damage con. Um, here we have yet another German ship. German ships, obviously, very tasty when it comes to HE damage. And we're happy to try to light him on fire. Um, here you can see I'm about to make, you know, a pro, a real pro move. We're going to do a three-point turn. And we use this island here to kind of like stop our progress. What a what a smart maneuver that was totally intentional. In any case, you can see some shots coming in. Uh, thankfully, those were at our ally in front of us and not directly at us because with a broadside, you can take just a ton of damage in this ship all at once. Um, that continual rain of fire looks a little bit like maybe there's an Atlanta over there. Uh, what I was thinking is that I would actually swing around behind this guy. Uh, you can see my smoke just recharged and I was gonna actually consider leaving him a smoke screen so that we could uh, retreat in relative peace. Uh, as it is, I'm just going to be happy not to be considered a target. Now you will notice that I haven't shot for a little bit. That's to make sure that no one can see me, and I, I definitely don't want any attention right now. And that's playing into the Belfast's strengths in terms of its stealth. Kind of a risky play here. You never know when someone's going to start shooting at the boat that's right next to you and accidentally hit you instead. Clear, clearly that never happened. So now we are going to go ahead and sail into A because why not try to, you know, get in on these capture points. We have done, you know, our part in actually trying to secure that. Here you can see some shots at the Scharnhorst over that mountain. We're using essentially the mini map to try to judge what position he's in. Uh, but we also use the shell follow view there. Preset number one and two have that as an option. Um, not a common option for players, but I have actually started to notice a couple people on YouTube actually using it. And uh, I like I like to take credit for that. In any case, uh, we're sailing towards B. We don't really need to push this too hard because our team is already winning. And, I mean, we don't want them to get B because if they do get B, um, that means essentially we're going to start bleeding points, at least relative to the enemy team. Now that I'm basically out in the open, I'm shooting at that Atlanta B way out there. With my build, I'm probably just a little too far away to actually citadel him. This build is actually really effective for cruisers at close range. I'm pretty sure he's done. I'm going to look over at that New Mexico. There you see we've sealed the deal. Um, that is actually a pretty good example of what happens when you aim too low. Aiming low is kind of a habit, particularly if you play a lot in battleships. With the Belfast, you do want to aim as high as possible. Now, I am going to go ahead and pop a radar. That allows me to see that New Mexico, even from smoke. Uh, this is not exactly necessary. He's, he's probably going to die one way or the other. But you can just imagine in a game that does actually have destroyers, um, eight and a half kilometers, not, not great on the range of the radar but the fact that you can even use it is is a big plus and one of the things that that really plays to the Belfast's credit so uh, as I'm gonna try to 
chase down this last person on the enemy team. I'll go a little bit into the campaign and my general thoughts. Um, if you can get the Belfast, I think she is definitely one of the more fun tier 6 cruisers to play. She can be really fragile, so you will get yourself deleted if you make too many mistakes in this game. Uh, unfortunately, too many mistakes is often one, but that's just because battleship accuracy is what it is. Um, I do believe that I made a mistake in my campaign rundown yesterday. I think that after you get past some of the weekly Havoc missions, you do actually have the ability to complete multiple shakedown trials at one time. So weeks three and four probably shouldn't be quite as hard as I was making them out to be. Obviously, we'll be able to probably tell next week when we start seeing multiple shakedown trials. In any case, we sail on to victory without being able to chase that last guy down. There you can see us on the top of the list. Here you can see the economics with the ship, just standard with a premium account. And there's the amount of money that you would make at approximately the same amount of experience earned. Hope you guys have found this to be a helpful video. And I'll see you real soon on the next one.